Hey guys, welcome back. So now a few of you guys have been asking me to do a video on the 2022 Batman Spawn crossover by Todd McFarlane and Greg Capullo. And for me, I was just kind of like, um, yeah, of course. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this because Todd McFarlane said it first, so I feel safe saying it now. But when it comes to drawing Batman and Spawn, either or, Greg Capullo is that guy. And I mean, when it comes to Batman, you also got Jim Lee and David Finch, who are also two of my favorites. But when we start getting into all the dark and gritty stuff, Greg Capullo just built different. So I was super excited when you guys said you wanted to see a video on this new crossover, because I really enjoyed this one. But with that being said, let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so with how this begins, we start off with a monologue that is given by Spawn, where he begins talking about the similarities and the differences between himself and Batman, and how he had found out that their whole lives, the two of them have been fighting. And in either case, neither one of them can think back to a time when they weren't battling or fighting for something, even though the two of them grew up in completely different worlds, with Bruce Wayne growing up in a rich family and Al Simmons not so much. But regardless of the two of them growing up under completely different circumstances, the two of them knew conflict, they knew pain, and they knew loss. Because eventually, Bruce lost his parents, Martha and Thomas Wayne, and Al Simmons lost Wanda Blake, the love of his life. But through the course of Spawn talking about the similarities and differences between himself and Batman, he then goes on to talk about his pursuit to get Wanda back by heading into the void, the black abyss where heaven and hell intersect, and hearing a voice while he was there, which told him that the power that he was looking for had already been given to someone else. And Spawn was told that this person was a monster that looked like him, covered in a black symbiote, so powerful that it cloaked his entire being, even his battle cape, the one they called the Black Beast. And real quick, I'm not gonna front. When I first read this and heard about Spawn hearing a voice in the void telling him about some guy covered in a black symbiote, in my mind, before I finished that paragraph, was already thinking about Venom and the possibility that somehow, some way, we could get the Secret Crisis crossover. But just to be clear, right here, it's not the case because this voice that Spawn had heard in the void had been talking to him about Batman. And as we get deeper into this, I'll explain to you guys who that was and what exactly that means. But from here we find that with Spawn hearing this, from this voice from within the void, it had then went on to tell him that if he wanted to get to the Black Beast or Batman, he would have to get past those closest to him. But this same voice also went on to tell Spawn that it could get Spawn to Batman for one night. And with Spawn getting to the Black Beast himself, Batman, this would then give Spawn the opportunity to unlock Wanda's soul. But it's from here we find that Spawn has taken up this mysterious voice on this offer. And it's from here where he leaves Jessica Priest, the more recent she Spawn, to make his way back to the void and take the power from Batman that he needs. But then we also find at this time, on this night, Bruce is also mourning the death of his parents on the anniversary night of when he had lost them years ago. But also at this time, the bat signal goes up in the sky and Alfred tells Bruce that he doesn't have to go out there tonight. But Bruce suits up and he tells Alfred that doing their job is the best way to honor his parents. But then it's from here we find that the bat signal had went up because Commissioner Gordon had been receiving a number of cryptic messages all night, of which he had then forwarded to Batman, which all lead Batman back to Crime Alley in the same location where he had lost his parents in order to investigate. And with Batman returning here, of course he knows Gotham in particularly this location very well. But when he arrives here, not only does he find that this location has been altered, allowing him to walk into an area that shouldn't exist, but as he continues, he then finds one of Martha's pearls glimmering on the ground in this new area. And as soon as he picks it up, he's then met by a member of the Court of Owls, who tells Batman that not only is he glad that he'd recognized one of the pearls, but he also lets Batman know that prior to Martha's death, something was hidden in one of those pearls. And though she didn't know, Thomas Wayne did know. And unfortunately, Martha was wearing those pearls that night, which were holding something that the Court of Owls needed back, and it's unfortunate that she had to die. But with Batman hearing this, he tries to snatch the pearls away from this guy, only for him to vanish and then appear behind him, taunting Batman more while telling him that he wasn't the only monster created that night. But with him standing much closer, Batman is able to snatch the pearls away from him. But with doing so, they snap, and his hero Spawn morphs into his natural form, and he gets the drop on Batman, because now one of their monsters has arrived. And right away from here, when these two get into it, Spawn is just working Batman, 
and I mean understandably so, because Spawn's strength and durability are more of a fit for him to be taking on Superman. But with Spawn getting here, he's more enraged than logical in this moment. But again, this is because right now, Spawn believes that Batman is the beast and that he's unrightfully taken the power to access the abyss between heaven and hell. So when he gets here, he's ready to beat Batman into submission. And with Batman getting caught off guard, he's just trying to stay alive. But with Spawn putting in all this work and giving Batman the business, suddenly it all stops as Spawn's powers shut down. And it's here where the two of them realize that this portion of this alley is a dead zone, which is an area where those of supernatural power have no power and only the strength of a regular person. And as soon as Batman notices this, he then makes it his mission to serve Spawn the same level of a beatdown that he had just endured. But from here, with the two of them fighting on a normal playing field, it's more evenly matched, with both of them being well versed in hand to hand combat. But while the two of these guys are fighting for several minutes, which is a long time in fight time, it's here we find that this is going just as the Court of Owls had planned, because members of the Court of Owls have wanted to kill Batman for years, and they believe that their new recruit, this Hellspawn, can get the job done. Because for centuries, the Court of Owls have been controlling Gotham from the shadows with an insatiable need for power. And for a long time, Batman has been in the way of that. But amongst themselves, the members of the court see Batman differently. Because on one hand, getting rid of Bruce Wayne would allow the court to sink their claws deeper into Gotham, seizing more control. But on the other hand, there are those of the court who see Batman as a potential leader. So really amongst them, with Batman fighting Spawn, they know how to make use of it whichever way this goes. Because if Spawn actually kills him, no more Bruce Wayne. But if Batman defeats Spawn, then he'll be their savior, their leader. And this match between Batman and Spawn that has been set up, it's really more of a testing ground to see which side of the owls is right. Because either way that this goes, they know how they want to make use of it. But throughout this fight between Spawn and Batman, Batman ends up tossing Spawn out of the dead zone. And with doing so, Spawn gets back all of his powers. <laughs> and he knows it. So he tells Batman to come over here. And Batman's then more or less like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and Spawn's like, man, you can't stand there forever. Like, literally, you can't. But then it's here we kind of get this Batman v Superman moment because Spawn tells Batman more or less not to cower away, not tonight on the night that you killed her. So then Batman's like, well, who died on the 26th? Are you talking about Martha? And Spawn, of course, is like, no, Wanda. Because again, Spawn was told by a voice from the abyss that Batman has taken the power, the keys to the abyss, where the dead zones are created, the place where every soul for a heartbeat is passed through. And if Batman has that power, then he's keeping Wanda away from Spawn. But during this standoff in conversation, Batman tells Spawn that they're being watched. And for a moment, Spawn sees a figure in the distance, but then at the blink of an eye, they just fade away. And it's here where Batman asks Spawn, why haven't I seen you before or heard of you? And he goes on to tell Spawn that the two of them have been tricked. And from there, when Spawn asks Batman to prove it, as a response, Batman just simply steps forward. And he tells Spawn that he can kill him if he wants, which could have been the end of this story. But then Batman goes on to say that otherwise they need to talk and they need to figure some things out. And from there, Spawn agrees. But just after this, we then head over across town where there's a meeting being held by members of the Court of Owls. And as we jump in, we come to find that they're gathering together to report an update on whether Batman has been killed or not. And of course, as we know, he hasn't. But through the course of all of this, we come to find out that this group of members of the Court of Owls, they're more of a rogue bunch from the rest, and they've set all of this into play. But even still, with that being the case, it's hinted to us that someone else is using the Court of Owls to pull this off as part of a much larger plan which started with this group sending agents into the darkness and recruiting a Hellspawn as their backup, with Batman being the key and the Hellspawn being the trigger. But then it's here where the newest Talon is introduced to the group in order to make sure that things go as planned. And the Talon plans to do so by continuing to exploit Batman and Spawn's weaknesses, which for both of them is centered around a woman that they both loved and lost. Because aside from this group acting on their own will, and this not being a decision that was cleared by the Court of Owls as a whole, this group is determined to kill Batman tonight and end his soul, unlike the other owls who want to recruit him. But then it's after this when we head over to the Batcave with Batman and Spawn, who are kind of getting along a little better. But right off the bat, you can tell that Spawn thinks that Batman is in over his head, and mainly because Batman is only human. But even with Spawn learning more about Alfred and the Bat family, he doesn't believe that Batman's army has anything on his own army, because his army is exponentially more powerful. But as Spawn goes on, he's not just talking about his allies, but also anyone who Spawn's been up against since he had become Spawn, because he believes if Batman had to go up against any of his foes, whether it be the Violator or Overt Kill or Cygor, that any of these guys would have murdered Batman at a first glance. But for Batman, he doesn't see being human as a weakness. 
and he enjoys being human, but then Spawn lets him know that he did at one point too, until it was taken from him. And his hero Spawn lets Batman know that whoever is truly behind this, once they're done, they're going to take Batman's humanity too. And once they've killed him, they're going to make him a hell spawn as well. As he transforms back into his natural form and he tells Batman to look at him cause this is his future. And Batman goes on to let Spawn know that there are others with powers and Spawn just cuts him off right there. And he tells Batman like if he's talking about Superman, then Batman is really in trouble because in Spawn's future, Superman was the first to go. And that was because they were not afraid of him. And it's right there where Alfred chimes in and he lets Spawn know that people are afraid of Batman, but Spawn disagrees saying not like they should be. But right away Batman lets Spawn know that he's fought people way more powerful than himself and if having powers was the end all be all then he would have been dead a long time ago and Batman lets Spawn know that he gets it. Spawn has been trained to think from the neck down and that's how he survived but for Batman using that method has nearly gotten him killed more times than he can count and that's why he's learned to use his brain because no matter how powerful their enemy may be everyone and everything has a weakness and what Batman does he finds it he exploits it and he scares the crap out of them in the process. And this here leads both Batman and Spawn out from the Batcave and going on their separate ways to investigate. And for Batman, he does Batman business as usual, beating the crap out of guys, asking questions, while on the other hand with Spawn, he has his own method, which of course is the more lethal approach, which is tearing throats out, punching eyeballs out of sockets, or even punching faces clean off. But eventually this leads to both Batman and Spawn making their way to the Joker, who at this point was pretty much just waiting on the two of them to show up. But when the two of them find the Joker, and even though this is more of an Elseworlds type of situation, I can't help but to place this story in my mind, somewhere around the time of like a, a Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo endgame era. And I mean part of that could be because Greg Capullo did the art for Scott Snyder's story and with Batman Spawn, Todd McFarlane has expressed in interviews with CBR that he's embraced Greg Capullo's input beyond the art and also involving him with the shaping of this story. And I guess for me, aside from Greg Capullo's art, which I love, with him drawing Batman for 10 years, as well as him drawing Spawn for 10 years, not only is he the best choice for Batman Spawn crossover in 2022, but also I believe because of his history with both Scott Snyder and Todd McFarlane, that Greg Capullo is possibly inadvertently bringing some Scott Snyder with him, because I can't help but to feel a bit of Endgame, Dark Knight's Metal, slash New 52 Court of Owls in here. But hey, then again, maybe that's just me. But at this point with both Spawn and Batman meeting back up and making their way to the Joker who had been expecting them and initially he's talking to them in circles but then it's here where the Joker lets them know that their leads that had led them to the Joker that they had actually been misheard because the person that they should be looking for is someone by the name of Joseph Kerr which is a very interesting name, which right away reminds me of an old Joker origin story that we got back in Batman Legends of the Dark Knight issue 66. And I mean really more so than it being an origin story, it had showed us a time before the Joker had became the Joker and he initially had met his wife Rebecca to where at that time he had introduced himself as Joseph Kerr, of which nowadays we've come to find out that that's not the Joker's actual name either, but with it being mentioned within the context of this Batman Spawn story which as it stands isn't grounded too deeply within Batman or Spawn's lore, which in the case of Batman, not too much really is these days, but that's okay, I get it. But I gotta say, when stuff like that gets thrown into a story like this, my mind gets going in all kinds of different multiversal directions. But with this lead bringing the two of them to the Joker, the Joker lets them know that this whole mess is being brought about by the Court of Owls. And the Joker wants the Court of Owls out of the way, because as long as they're still functioning, they're eating away at his town. And he doesn't mind pointing both Batman and Spawn in their direction because it works out for the Joker if the Court of Owls are destroyed. So with Batman and Spawn getting this new information, they then go on about their way. But as soon as they leave, we then see a number of little violator imps running up to the Joker as he goes on to say that Batman and Spawn have no idea on what's waiting for them after the Owls, which almost makes it seem as if there's a larger threat from Spawn's universe that's lurking here in Gotham. But as Spawn and Batman make their way to both prepare and pursue the Court of Owls, Batman asks Spawn what was his wife's maiden name and Spawn tells him that she'd never changed her name so as it stands her last name is Blake and Batman tells Spawn when he says Wanda's last name in that moment he wants Spawn to be ready. 
but really as it stands with the two of them teaming up here, we're shown that they really don't trust each other wholeheartedly, which makes sense because that's really not the character of either one of them. But at this time with the two of them having the common goal of stopping the Court of Owls, which the spawn is no different than the Court of Priests that he's dealt with, but with the two of them moving forward and being well aware that they both handle things quite differently and this ends up giving us a situation to where it's like yeah we're gonna work together but when it comes down to it Batman's gonna do things his way and Spawn is gonna do it his own way and you can very much tell on both ends that one is always trying to show the other that their own way is the better one but then it's from here where we find that the new Talon has made his way to Crime Alley where Spawn and Batman had just fought in order to retrieve Martha's Pearl, which is actually a device that can be operated by Batman as a key into the cosmos. Because for this rogue faction of owls, that's their plan. Because with them having the pearl and luring Batman in, knowing that as soon as he discovers that this pearl can bring his mother back and his father, I mean, don't forget Thomas. But for this group, once they've used Batman, the Talon is then instructed that once Batman uses the device and activates the portal, then the Talon has the green light to take Batman out. But then midway through this conversation, Spawn steps out of the shadows and he absorbs the leader of this Court of Owls group in his cape. And he tells the talent, I've taken your boss. You want him or Batman? Then come and find us if you can. And just like that, Spawn disappears. And shortly after his hero, we find that both Spawn and Batman had taken the rogue owl leader to Arkham Asylum where the two of them get in position and wait. And when the talent gets there, we come to find out that Arkham has been built on top of a dead zone, which was something that was done intentionally years ago in order to dampen the power of numerous criminals. And when the talent gets there, he tells Batman it makes no difference. All these dead zones work the same. But now that he's here, he tells Batman that he's going to do exactly what he's told because the owls made him. They made Batman the night his mother died. And without the owls, there is no Batman. But then it's here where Spawn steps in and he tells the Talon enough and with the Talon's back turned, Batman then moves into position. But also with how this is done, both Batman and Spawn, they want all the criminals at Arkham to see this. But in both cases, it's for very different reasons. Because for Spawn, while he's fighting with the Talon, which for a moment takes the two of them in the dead zone, it's through the course of this fight where the Owl's rogue leader is released from his constraints. But with Spawn and this Talon going back and forth, the Talon gets some good hits on Spawn. But then in return, Spawn's able to create some distance by Spartan kicking this guy across the yard. But with the two of these guys worn out and Spawn having to fight this guy in the dead zone, Spawn takes a minute to catch his breath, but when he does, the Owl's leader who had been freed from his constraints attempts to shoot Spawn in the back, but Batman's able to swoop in and stop this from happening. But just after, Spawn tells Batman to cut the lights, and Batman's not sure exactly why, but Spawn tells him to just do it. And so within this commotion, Batman cuts the lights, but then he cuts them back on, only to find that Spawn has just killed this guy, just outside of the dead zone, but also doing so under the appearance that he's Batman. Because for Spawn, this was his plan. He wanted to do this in front of these criminals, so that Batman would be feared as Spawn believes that Batman should be so that after this, criminals will believe that if they push Batman too far, they'll have to pay with their lives. But also Spawn is hoping with doing this that Batman's survivability chances will go up. But the next, moments later, the Talon catches Spawn off guard, gets him back in the dead zone, so that Spawn will be nearly human. And with doing so, he threatens to cut Spawn's throat unless Batman cooperates and opens the portal. But then in response, Batman's like, nope, dude, just kill the guy. And he tells the Talon to go ahead, but he lets him know that if he does, he's gonna push a button and free all the prisoners in Arkham because he knows that when he does, these prisoners are gonna come after the Talon. Because even though Batman put most of these guys in here, he knows that the one thing that they hate more than Batman is the people that created him. But I would also imagine that Spawn's little charade was kind of playing into Bruce's favor here. But while Batman's talking to the Talon, Spawn then eases his way out of the dead zone, which immediately gives him his powers back. But also when this is done, Batman kicks the Talon and he yells Blake, which is Wanda's last name, but also the signal that Batman told Spawn that he would give him when he wanted him to be ready. And when the Talon goes flying towards Spawn, he just absorbs him into his cape. But now with the rogue owl faction no longer being an issue, Batman picks up Martha's pearl and he notices that it's cracked, but he's not sure if that's an issue. But just after this, we then head into the epilogue and it's here where we find that both Wanda and Martha are back with Wanda appearing in Batman's universe and Martha appearing in Spawn's. To where then after this, we then see the Violator somewhere in the void, saying that everything is working as planned. And now the next move is his. And so now real quick, 
I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But yeah, that'll do it for this one, guys. But also, let me know what you guys think down in the comments about Batman Spawn in 2022. Because for me, I really enjoyed it. It was a really fun story, kind of dense, but fun. But I also think I would have rather this to be like a mini series, like a six part mini series, so that the story could really breathe and build and possibly even tell us how Bruce Wayne turning into a hell spawn could have turned out, while also giving us the full scope of what was teased with the Joker and the Violator, and perhaps even a civil war within the Court of Owls. <laughs> like, I'm here for all that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.